Located in the heart of Dublin's north inner city, one place cares for children from all corners of the country. A home from home, offering hope at times of uncertainty and strength in times of need. into their world, we witness difficult decision-making, life-changing surgery, and powerful success stories. In the emergency department, we never know what's going to come through the door next. Theatre staff have to be ready for surgery at any given time. I see you treat critically ill children 24-7. Following the journey of families and their children, undergoing vital and life-saving treatment, welcome to Temple Street Children's Hospital. This morning, 23-month-old Tiva Brand Donaldson has arrived on the top flat ward ahead of surgery to correct her hip dysplasia. Tiva came in this morning at about 7 a.m. for um, a left hip osteostomy and that means her hip is dysplastic and it, it basically isn't in the ball and socket as much as it should be, so it needs surgical intervention. We've known since she was about six weeks. Our family doctor. Um, picked up that she had hip dysplasia at the six weeks checkup, and she said that we needed to go ahead and get a scan done. And then at three months, they put her into a cast. They nipped her tendon first, and then they put her in a cast, and then she was in it for 12 weeks, and then got cast changes every four weeks, because as she was growing, she needed a bigger cast on. It was full on, she was heavy, and changing nappies is a bit difficult but it was all supposed to be for her to be able to walk properly because in the long term she could have arthritis by the time she's in her teens. It's okay. Well, happy. It's okay, it's only cream. Oh, it's nice. Tiva's been in the hospital before for casting without the uh, theatre, so she knew that, she knew there was something up this morning, so she was very anxious. The nurses were coming to take her temperature and things. She's, I think she has a little bit of trauma from being here before. She remembers a little bit of it. Had she seen anybody coming close to her? That was it. Yes. You've had it. It is hereditary in that it runs in families to some degree, but it's not strictly genetic. So it, I, I suppose many children we see with severe dysplasia have no family history. So this is her normal hip. And the outer margin of the hip is parallel to the ground and it forms a sharp angle. So this femoral head, most of which you can't see because it's cartilaginous, is safe for the future. Whereas this one, the femoral head is in here, but the socket just runs up at a very shallow angle. So untreated and unchanged, that will be a hip replacement when she's 30 or 35. So the surgery simply cuts the bone here and and makes that more horizontal. We have a simple solution for this uh, once the child is diagnosed. Our problem is that children are not being diagnosed because they're not being screened. If we initiated universal uh, ultrasound screening of neonatal hips, we would pick up all of the dysplasias. The majority would be treated conservatively and the vast majority of children would not require surgical intervention and would be safe from premature arthritis in the teens and in the early uh, 20s for lack of resources, uh, we're not screening all children. And I think that really should be a priority because it would save a lot of children a lot of surgery. From the beginning, it, it seemed as if it was always going to come to this point. They always said all along they were looking towards an operation. They tried everything to prevent an operation by putting her in the cast and then the brace. And they said they, before she's two, because it wasn't settling, it's more than likely going to be the operation. I mean, I guess we were kind of always geared up that it was... But you hope, gonna, I mean, they tell yeah, you the oh, news yeah. of you might be looking towards an operation and you hope and you wish and you pray and you... But at the end of the day, it's not. The procedure has to be done, you know. In the long run, it'll be better for her. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. 
it's quite a daunting situation for any child where you have all these um, nurses around her. While Tiva waits for surgery, 12-year-old Kelsey Boylan has arrived on the day ward ahead of a minor procedure. I didn't really like them because, like, I used to get slagged in my old school and all. I go to a new school now, but, like, no one really knows about them, so I, I wear my hair down all the time. You won't put it back at all. You won't put it back at all. It's just down. It's been hard for her, you know. Some kids can be cruel. And finally coming off. Kelsey's here today because uh, she's 13 years old, almost, and like all young ladies, she's beginning to become more concerned about her appearance. She has what are called congenital preauricular ear tags. In other words, they are small skin tags that have grown since birth in front of her ears. This is just extra bits of skin, which you can have in any area. In her case, it's just to the front, just before her ears. It's due to an abnormality of the way the ear forms, but it doesn't affect hearing and it doesn't affect anything functional. Uh, they don't have anything um, sinister about them. They're just ordinary overgrowth of the ear bits as the ear is growing. She was born with them. He said that you were fine, that you wouldn't grow her aunt. But they said because uh, she was so young, the local anaesthetic and all that, they couldn't do it. So they'd have to wait till she was 12 to 13 to do it. Parent and child usually discuss it with the GP. Then if they decide they need to do something further, then they're referred to a plastics consultant. Her own GP, um, she was after looking, checking them out, and she was saying that because she's the girl, she says, I recommend that she should come off. She's very conscious of it. I feel nervous and scared of it. Like when you get in, like you're real scared and then you're at home like, yeah, I can't wait. And then when you get in, you're like, oh no. <laughs> She'll be grand. While Kelsey prepares for surgery, Harry Gardner arrives in the emergency department after an accident in school. Harry presented him with his mum um, with an injured wrist. When a child presents in like this, we always have to get a good history to try and establish the mechanism of the injury. What brings you here today? I was playing football and uh, uh, a ball came in and tackled me and he stopped the ball and I fell over and landed on my wrist. Okay, did you put your arm out in yes. front of you to save yourself? Okay. And where is it sore now? Uh, it's all sort of just in there. They had done very well immobilising the injury. He had his sling on, so that would help with pain. So we're just going to have a look and make sure that none of the other bones there are sore. And then we, I'm going to work my way down the whole arm. On examination, then, you just have to outrule other injuries and try and pinpoint where the actual injury is. He was very pinpointed. There was some swelling around his forearm and um, wrist area. Now we want to see the movement of your joints. So we're going to see how your shoulder moves and then how your elbow moves. Your shoulder's moving. Arm up over your head. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Can you do up and down of the wrist? No. No, too sore. He was in quite a bit of pain, actually, when he came in. You know, he hadn't had anything for pain. I'm just going to feel it once. There. That's it now. We're nearly done, okay? After he's had some pain relief, Harry undergoes a second examination. Yeah. Could you lift your arm a bit sore? They would sort out, or you have to carry your arm. Okay, so put it back. Okay, so put it back. Okay, the form of the hand. Yeah. Do you want to move, you move to your, your fingers? Move your fingers. Do you feel them? Do you feel what I'm doing now? Good. Great. So based on this examination, we sent him to x-ray. I hope it's not fractured or broken, but what can you do if it is? Hopefully it'll be bandaged up. It's going to go, go directly down. Oh. That's the sorest part, Harry. You're really well, Harry. I'm really sorry. If it is fractured, I'll be losing a lot of exercise because I have three training sessions for Gaelic and hurling, and two for soccer, and uh, two matches at the weekends. And I won't be able to use an, a knife for dinner. Oh, yeah, because you're left-handed. Yeah. Would you still be able to write in school? Mm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> While Harry waits on his x-ray results, Tiva makes her way to theatre. So you feel kind of, you know, at loss really. You want to stay in comfort, or but obviously it's in the hands of the surgeons then. It's kind of hard because <laughs> there's nothing you can do. Okay, very much. Okay. Thanks, guys.
Bye. Bye. You wait till 18 months. That's the age at which we start contemplating this kind of bony surgery. At, at, in younger children, although they're dysplastic, the cartilage, bone, hip is too uh, soft, essentially. It's predominantly water, the femoral head. And if we turn down the bone on a soft femoral head, we could damage it. Because we do a lot of this surgery, the technique we use is somewhat modified from the standard traditional procedure. Uh, the standard procedure is a relatively large uh, incision. The bone is cut with a gilet saw, which is a wire saw. The dysplasia is corrected and two wires are inserted, which are then removed under a second anesthetic six weeks later. And traditionally, the child is put in a, in a plaster of Paris cast. Here, we have it down to a two centimeter incision, uh, and we use a small electric saw, so we don't need um, a large incision. And we don't use wires anymore, we use dissolvable uh, equivalents, which don't need to be removed, so there's no need for a second operation. And we don't use a, a plaster of Paris cast, we use a removable brace uh, for three or four weeks. It's a much easier procedure, and it has to be an easy procedure for me to because it's a prophylactic operation. In other words, the child doesn't yet have a problem. They don't have arthritis. And I have to be able to convince parents that, that we have a simple solution for a problem that may not arise for 35 years. Uh, if it was a bigger, difficult procedure, um, parents would be reluctant to, under, to accept it. Surgeons would be reluctant to do it. And dysplasia would be accepted. Uh, and nobody really suffers for 35 or 40 years until the, until the arthritis starts. It's a short procedure, about 10 minutes uh, surgical time. And the child, like Tiva, has a general anaesthetic plus an epidural, so they're pain-free when they wake up. I went down to co uh, collect her in theatre, she wanted out, but since she got back up to mum and dad, she's really settled. recovering from surgery. He said she'd probably make a really good recovery now. And she's on a morphine pump, so she gets a, a little bit of morphine all the time, just a titch to her body weight, and then if she needs more, I have a little button I push, and, and that's based on it, if she's awake and crying, because she can't tell us if she's in pain. She came back in a brace, which we're able to take off and put on to change the nappies, which makes life a lot easier for her and, and me. For that procedure, it's always just a brace. We don't use casts, but casts are still used, um, but they're not necessary. We've demonstrated that over 15 years here of doing this. They had recently said that they would put pins in her hip, but now they've put in these dissolvable pins, so she won't have to go in for another operation. Things are looking much better than what they were, you know, and then the brace will only be on for a week, they said, depending on our mobility. The brace is worn traditionally with six weeks. We have it down to about four weeks now. And now my instruction to parents is when the child wants to kick it off and start moving, let them. It's really for comfort because the little bit of bone heals in three or four weeks uh, at that age. It's the end of the road for now. They will have to keep an eye on it, but I think she's over the worst. Hopefully home tomorrow, all going well. If she eats, drinks, um, passes urine and is pain free um, and we're happy with her brace and, and of course her foot as well. Her, that her, there's a good colour in her foot and good perfusion and pulses, she can go home. We'll follow her up over several years with x-rays to ensure that with ongoing growth her hip now develops normally. Um, but if the next two or three x-rays are normal over the next two or three years, she's discharged. Tifa is on the road to recovery and will return to the hospital in three weeks for a checkup. In the meantime, Kelsey makes her way to theatre. Kelsey's a teenager, so there's a lot more that you can explain to a teenager, but you also have to be cognizant of the fact that it's in hospital, it's with strangers, and now it's a decision that a child is partially making themselves to have something done. So again, it's the importance of explaining the procedure and support through that procedure. Have you any questions? No. Kelsey elected to have it done under local anaesthetic. We gave her a choice as to whether or not she wanted to be 
uh, given a full general anaesthetic and be asleep for it, or whether or not she wanted to be awake and get local anaesthetic. Local anaesthetic is a very simple way of doing this. It means that she doesn't need a general anaesthetic and there's no recovery phase. You know, you're not asleep, so you don't have to wake up. Uh, the local anaesthetic itself freezes the area. In other words, it takes away all sensation from the area. And it does that by blocking the transmission through the nerves that are surrounding it. So she will only feel the pinprick and then some swelling as the fluid is injected, but after that it goes completely numb. The surgery itself is quite straightforward. Uh, just the tag has to be literally cut off, but the most important part of that is that you have to remove the small piece of cartilage that's usually inside each of these tags. And uh, if you don't remove the piece of cartilage, you end up leaving a small lump under the skin, which is always felt as a piece of grizzle in front of the ear. You don't want to do that. Once we had finished the procedure, we put in a couple of stitches, and all she had was a very simple dressing put on it. In accident and emergency, Harry's results have just arrived. How did you get on? Good. Yeah? Definitely don't think it's broken. Do you not? I think it might be. Oh, um, no. <laughs> okay. So there's your bones and your hands. Can you make them out? Can you see this little bump? Luckily enough, his seems to be straightforward. There is a break through both the bones, but the bones are nicely lined up, um, right, so, so they should they heal. Should There's heal. no angle, yeah. yeah. As Harry has had a clean break, the support of a cast will aid his recovery. We'll put on your cast and let you out of here. Yeah. Yeah? This is just like a half bandage. Exactly, so all it? we want to do is we want to immobilize it, keep that um, arm in the right position, and nice and straight. Brilliant, okay, and wiggle the fingers again, and they're a nice colour. So that's the type of thing that you're going to be looking for when he has the cast on, just looking at the hand in comparison to the other hand, mm. and making sure it's the, the same colour and the same temperature. If you notice any yeah. blueness, coldness, pins and needles, or swelling, sorry, chicken, okay. What have you rested on that? Will that be better? Chicken, you're only leaving holes for the thumb and the finger. <laughs> Everyone thinks that hole is for the finger, but wait till I show you now what it's for. There's method in my madness, you'll see now. Straighten out there. So we're going to bring it up over the elbow just to give it that extra bit of support, okay? When I put this cast on, this is the position we want it in, okay? Yeah. And the wrist nice and straight there, okay? It goes quite hard quite quickly, but it doesn't fully harden for 24 hours. So you need to make sure to keep it in the position that I put it into. Because Soak that yeah. Out. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <Ooh. laughs> this is playtime. This is it now. It's a messy job. Someone has to do it. So we let your mum hold just his fingertips there. Okay. Mm, straighten yeah. up, you see. Oh. 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 Only soft for a wee minute. You have to stay okay. really straight. You're doing great. It's nearly done now. Oh, oh, you look good. <laughs> It wasn't for your finger. <laughs> Everyone puts their finger <laughs> through there. Now, we put on a back slap. Here we put on an above elbow back slap and we've referred him to the orthopaedic clinic. He'll go back to outpatients for the orthopaedic team to follow up. I'm out of sport and I'm not allowed to play for three to six weeks. It's not very good. But I'm sort of happy that I, have, I finally have a cast. I'd say he's more thrilled at the fact that he has a blaster cast coming that everybody can sign, but uh, he'll experience the pain. <laughs> After a successful surgery, Kelsey makes her way back to the day ward. I'm looking forward to seeing her. She'll have confidence now, hopefully, you know, and not worry about them. It'll be great. You can get up here there on the bed again if you want to. So all done. Oh, that hey. looks great. She's delighted. Yeah. Delighted. Are you happy now? Yeah. The aftercare is that she needs to keep it dry for a couple of days and uh, the little dressing will peel off itself, the stitches are absorbable and they'll fall out, so essentially it's quite simple. Kelsey was great, she recovered very well from surgery, she was quite happy with the local anaesthetic, she came back, she had something to drink, 
a nice little chat at her plan for what's going to happen when she got home and also a plan for coming back to outpatients. I'm going to book you back in in six weeks for Mr Early's clinic. clinic. Is that all right? That's brilliant, yeah. 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 Now when her scars heal and she sees it for herself, once she's happy with that, hopefully then her confidence will just go on and on from there. Three weeks since her surgery, Tiva returns to outpatients to check in with Professor McCormick. Time for her to come out of brace today. The x-ray looks good, uh, so she's over the surgery. Good to say hello. All well? All well. Yeah. She seems, seems to be doing brilliant. Um, I'm going to show you her x-ray, it's fine. Her acetabulum, her socket, which was very shallow, is now quite deep. That's the objective, so we've achieved the objective. So you can see where we've cut the bone and leaned on it, so this becomes horizontal. She's a nice deep socket now. And we infill this with a little piece of bone from here. And we fix it all with two dissolvable pins, which have gone now, you can't see them, and the whole thing begins to heal up. And in another year, you won't see any evidence of surgery. She'll just have a normal looking x ray. The only um, issue is the future because she's still got a lot of growth. So even with a normal x ray today, I wouldn't dare suggest that it'll continue to be normal. It probably will be. There's a small chance that as she grows, this won't grow and it becomes relatively shallow again, which is why we follow. And if that happens, we fix it again. It's not a big issue. How's the wound? The scar? It looks like it's healed. Oh. Yeah, fine. Well. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh. Is this for me, is it? <gasps> Thanks very much. Is my lunch. Dr. McCormack. Did you say thank you? Happy? Yeah. <laughs>